Hello, uh, welcome to the Dr. Shelley Meyer YouTube channel and the Women in Medicine Be the Change podcast. I'm so excited to have Dr. Priyanka Venkat Raman today. Um, we're going to be talking about her transition, not necessarily out of the field of OB guy or OBGYN. Sorry, you might prefer to say it that way. <laughs> um, yeah, um, and into supporting moms directly and out of her experience with that need for support. So I'm excited to have this conversation and to provide inspiration out there for other women in medicine that might be looking for some kind of change that still embraces their field, but also provides true support and connection with people that might need their expertise. So welcome. And um, Dr. Thank Bianca, you. just tell us about your story and your background and kind of what led you to where you are now. Absolutely. So, um, you know, I went through undergrad loving math and science, and I couldn't really pick between the two. So I had to find ways um, to figure out where I was headed. I loved engineering. I actually did biomed engineering and did fantastic. I would have had a 4.0 GPA in that if I didn't have to do medicine. Oh, wow. <laughs> it wow. was the pre-med courses that really boggled my mind. <laughs> um, but I, I wasn't, um, I did uh, train to be an EMT. And that's where I truly found my passion. And I was like, okay, nope, medicine is it. And it truly, really connected with me. So I immediately, you know, went through all the pre-med courses. Um, and as I said, engineering was so easy that, you know, for my exams for engineering classes, I would probably just look through algorithms at 9 a.m. of the daily exam. And I was great. But med school what? really <laughs> kicked my butt. As, well, pre-med and med school really kicked my butt. But I... Yeah. I you know, I had to go through it because I found that passion there. And I was like, you know what? I really want to be a healer. I really want to go down this route. So I took the harder route through med school, through residency. And um, I finished residency in 2014. And I've, since then, I was practicing for eight years as an OBGYN um, in a community setting. And it's been great. I, I've had a long journey, but I somehow um, feel like I lost myself. And I don't yeah. think I even realized that till now. Till right this year but now that I look back and now that I've had this time to reflect it's probably 2018 so mm -hmm. backtracking a little bit I actually had um, my first child in 2019 and a lot of things shifted in how I thought of medicine and how I wanted to be there for people in medicine I'm sorry as patients how mm -hmm. I wanted to be there for patients after I had a kid of myself and mm -hmm. you know before it was all about career, all about giving myself to patients and being there for them. In fact, I'm one of those people, and this is, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone, but I was one of those people who was at work till 9 or 10 p.m. at night, calling back patients, spending time yeah. with them. Yeah, because and, you're trying to be what you'd envisioned yourself to be, right? To be a right, caretaker. Right. Yeah. I, what really, what I realized now is quality mattered to me. So, right. you know, sometimes... I would see that a postpartum person was there in my office. I had, only, I had probably only six minutes to spend with them because I was double booked or triple booked. And I knew they were struggling. So I would sometimes call them after hours just to check in and then spend that hour with them, which I couldn't spend before. But then mm -hmm. when I had a kid of my own, there was no way I could spend that time. How could you do and that? Yeah, Exactly. And of course, the pregnancy itself was hard. I was a high-risk pregnancy. I was disabled. Uh, I had to go out on disability for about six months and then mm. coming back postpartum with a newborn who actually had a lot of sensitivities and allergies that required me to continue breastfeeding for a full year. And wow. honestly, I never thought of, I, you know, I kept an open mind. I was like, I'm going to try when I'm home, but absolutely when I go back, I'm going to have to switch to formula. And, but every time we tried a formula at home, he literally would vomit for five hours after. Oh, and it was heartbreaking. heartbreaking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It caused me PTSD. Every time yeah. he vomits, I freak out. I'm like, oh, yeah. how is this one of those reactions? Um, but the hardest of that was I had to, I was the only source of nutrition for him, at least for yeah. the first six months. And then even after that, we couldn't find a milk that worked. You know, we finally got in, I'm in Boston. So we finally got into Boston Children's and we finally found the right people who told me, this is what this is. And we figured out what we could switch to it when he became a year old. Because, mm -hmm. you know, he can't get cow's milk. So yeah. that was one of our problems. And it was so isolating and such a struggle going through, right. you know, practicing as an OBGYN with labor and delivery, which made for calls with surgeries, trying to best feed through all of that. I even had pumps mm -hmm. on during a C-section. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I think I was bad that one time I had pumps on during a driving. I don't eat fast food very often. It was a healthy option, but I had them on with my shirt because <laughs> I was trying to go from location to location when I was working. Yeah. Well, you always rehab. think, you know, 
the surgery is going to be fine. It's going to be, you know, quick in and out. You'll be done. I'm like, no, they always end up being the more complicated ones and you're stuck with your pumps on for a lot longer. It was not fun. (laughs) Um, Oh, that's funny. (laughs) I would add though, these are one of those pumps that, that are underneath your clothes. So they're not. Of course. Yeah. Mine was too. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah. Um, But it was very isolating, a big struggle. And I went through all of that in the middle of the pandemic. As I said, he was born in 2019. Um, And I I pushed through because we always were told you've got to keep pushing through, even through med school, through residency. You just push through. You keep putting the career first. Yeah, I was going to say putting others, putting the career, the patients, the insurance company. Putting the patients first. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Everybody first. And that was um, very hard for me. It was, you know, it was, it caused a lot of guilt feelings, guilt that mm-hmm. I couldn't give my patients the most guilt that I couldn't give my son the most, um, that I wanted to guilt mm-hmm. that I couldn't bring that quality of care, even that I wanted to with my patients. Right. And, you know, it didn't help that my son didn't sleep for ch- till he was two years old. So he didn't sleep. Through oh, the doesn't night. Help anything. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, so it was um, it was a struggle, and I went through all of that and still continued to work. But I think my last straw was childcare. It, it was just you know with the pandemic, we had a great nanny for a year and a half, and she was fantastic. And unfortunately, because her husband fell ill, she couldn't continue to work with us. Mm. And it took me six months of trying and trying to find someone that we finally said, you know what, we're just going to go uh, with daycare. But things just you know even with daycare, when his first introduction was in the middle of winter. He was out a lot of the days and I couldn't right. have balanced being at work and being um, there for him and picking him up when he vomits or picking him up when there's a GI bug or COVID spreading mm-hmm. in the daycare. So um, childcare was what broke things down for me. But honestly, it probably was coming. It was, ha- you know, the burnout was there 2018. Now that I think right. back. Yeah. yeah, it's it's kind of ingrained in our training and, you know, it, all fields oh, yeah. in, in medicine. And we don't realize it's there till something drastic happens. And then we're like, right. It took childcare for me to step back and reevaluate things. And I'm so grateful I did get that chance. So I I quit. And um, as of March, 2022, I'm not working as an OBGYN right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know there's probably mixed feelings, but congratulations. (laughs) You know, (laughs) I'm not saying that everybody needs to run out and quit their job, but if that was something that was, you know, on reflection, so burnout inducing for you and not supportive of you being able to practice the way you wanted to, and then also be supportive to, for yourself, for self-care mm-hmm. and your family, then. Right. Yeah. I think I, I got a chance to find myself by actually mm-hmm. quitting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then honestly, I don't think this is the end. I think, you know, I'm already looking into locums now that I've had these three months to really process and right. figure out you know what medicine is where I really enjoy what I do right. and I am still a healer so mm-hmm. I think uh, and I've already started looking at Wilkins options that are hopefully something that I can start especially now that uh, my son will be starting preschool so hopefully right. it'll be a, That's always a helpful. full day <laughs> where, mm-hmm. or where he's off like uh, for the entire day he's not going to be at home so that's going to be hopefully my next step to start locums and then that gives me the opportunity to work the way I want to Yes, have that freedom. Yeah. And you had that time to step back. And then you're also, you know, developing some some interesting uh, content and ideas for um, community and support for, for yeah. moms, correct? Yeah. So let me tell you about that. So just me going through those struggles, I just realized that all moms, we're all struggling through this. I know it can be such an isolating time too. And we all feel like we're alone in this. Even if you have friends or people talking to you, it doesn't feel... Like if you don't have someone else going through the same stuff and voicing the, some of the things that you're feeling too, you still feel isolated. And I actually picked this up more from uh, what brought me into my change, which was coaching. And when I went through my coaching, I went through a program, which was actually a community and had a lot of group sessions. And I was mm-hmm. like, wow, having this community of women physicians with me was fantastic. And realizing that we're not alone. We all have the same problems. We all have the same issues. We all have the same concerns in medicine and we're not alone. And the same way, I feel that strongly about women um, going through pregnancy, postpartum, and then having a newborn at home as well. And so that's where I'm trying to um, be there for these women. I already have a website. It's www.mdsupportformoms.com. 
and love that support name for moms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And all it's, it's right now, it's just one-on-one. I'm available for women who would like to join. I'm there for them to go through this phase wherever they are in the pregnancy postpartum, or if they have a newborn home and have questions there. Um, it, it's more about figuring out what's right for you, because I can tell you right now that the postpartum time, there's no manual for it. There's no right way. There's no wrong way. You have to figure no. out what's right for you. You do. Yeah. And that's and where have I a, to guide people. An MD or, you know, a physician there kind of in your corner, because like you said, in your traditional visits, no matter how much you love your OBGYN, you know, you may not get enough time with them and you may not. Get Absolutely. That, that and that's my piece. pitch. That's my story. You don't want me to be your doctor. You want me to be there for you because right. that's what I couldn't give you in medicine. Right. You know, medicine became all about numbers, all about yes. metrics, or even about blood pressures and weight. Oh, you've gained too much this time. Or, you know, your blood pressure is high today. And the five or six minutes that I have in the room is talked about all these numbers. It's not about how are it's you not personal. Going? Yeah. yeah. It's, not, it's yeah. not getting to know that so, person or exactly. yeah, helping. And if we focus on those numbers, that's creating more stress for them. And even though we have to do it, we're not doing it because we like that, <laughs> you know, that's the, these are the checkoff things that we have to have in place but it's creating much more stress for them. And the, and then they're leaving the office, not feeling like they had their meet, needs met, but also feeling bad about themselves maybe because they're not right, meeting right. the criteria. So they, didn't get a, they, they don't get to bring up their agenda because yeah. as a physician, I'm stuck bringing up my agenda of things that I have yeah. to get through because yeah. of all the metrics, because of all the numbers, because of the volume that I have to see and the limited time I have, all these numbers just get in the way. So this mm-hmm. is my way of creating the space for just you, because this is what I feel like I was meant to do. And part of my burnout is because I moved away from this and being able yeah. to spend this quality time with everyone. And that's, that's what a healer is. And it this is. is where I feel like I can give more than, mm-hmm. you know, being at a delivery of, you know, six people in one day, not really getting to know any of them. Right. So. Right. I mean, obviously you need a doctor there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that baby. But yeah, the, that personal relationship is, is, is gone out of medicine in a lot of settings. And, and I'm glad you're, you're setting something up like this where, where that can be yeah. reestablished me, in non-clinical settings. Let me settings. tell you um, what I'm planning. So right now I'm already open for one-on-one, but I'm okay. waiting and hoping in this fall, as soon as I get a good group going, I'm, I'm going to create a community. And that's what my goal is because we are so isolated that mm-hmm. the community is what matters. When you realize yes. and you know there's so many of us struggling the same way, it's just so empowering. And that is my mission, to empower women through this community, to give them that value through this, what, I, what I'm hoping to call the village. Because honestly, it truly takes a village. It's it never, does. you're never alone. You can't do this alone. So no. the village is where I'm going to have community courses, group sessions, awesome. one-on-one sessions, and it'll help us come up with our own manual. Because you know what? There is no manual. There's no. no wrong way. There's no right way. <laughs> no. There's just your way. And right. I'm hoping, you know, that, and that, and that way is good enough. And I'm hoping to show women that that way, your way, your manual is good enough. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's so inspirational. I love it. Um, well, speaking of inspiration, what kind of words of inspiration do you have for the women in medicine that might be watching or listening to this as far as you know, taking care of themselves, rediscovering their passion for what they do, you know, any kind of words of advice? Absolutely. So honestly, um, I think every person, every person deserves a coach, honestly, Mm because our brains are just always in the negative. And we sometimes need to get out of the cycle. And that's what coaching showed me and plus the community. So I think one of the top things on my list, I have five things that I really can't get away <laughs> yeah. from, but one yeah. of my, the number one is community, mm-hmm. more about realizing you're not alone, but also community in the sense that you want to surround yourself with people who really are there for you, but also empower you to be better. You don't want your naysayers in that group. You don't want them in that circle around you because then that's going to bring you down because you've got your brain that's already bringing you down anyways. So surrounding yourself with people that truly um, bring you up and Mm -hmm. also in that same sense, know your own worth. Same with, you know, even in medicine, negotiating, but also voicing your concerns. If you think this is not where you want to be, this is not what you want to do. Speaking up. Mm -hmm. Speaking up and knowing your own worth. Yeah. Yes. And your Um, worth is not the RVUs that are set for you. Exactly. Your worth is not 
you know, all about your salary. It's just about who you are as a, per, a person yeah, yeah. and a provider. And, you know, in the, and the worst part that I was when I quit and I didn't know what was next, I'm very grateful for this. I actually had a patient uh, send a handwritten letter, a, a full page handwritten letter. And I just have to add that, like just she wrote down what I'd helped her through, how amazing that was and how she's always going to remember everything that she went through. And it just was, that's nice. what I want to be able to continue to do. Mm-hmm. And that's where my worth is. It's not mm-hmm. about the numbers. It's about that connection that I can make with yes. everyone. So, yes. yeah. So true. Yeah, yeah. That's why I transitioned out of, you know, regular medicine into direct right. care. You know, I have direct primary medicine and membership based mm-hmm. practice because I wanted that relationship back. Um, and, and maybe that's where patients. I'll go. Yeah, yeah it's, I'm, it's, I'm hoping. It's, yeah. 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 Well, you're creating a community and a space and that is so yeah. needed. So you are creating that relationship, you know, and that, right, right. that not really mentorship, but you know, that just that community coaching just support yeah, that yeah. Co- yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and that support, right. That's needed. And that's missing from our healthcare settings right now. So I'm absolutely. Really, yeah. And really then love I just what wanted you're to doing. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. And, you know, one of those reasons I'm going down this path is because of my core values. And what the, the second thing I would recommend that everyone gets to really think about is finding out your own values. Because honestly, through undergrad, through med school, residency, and then physician, being a physician, I honestly, somewhere in that path, lost myself. I didn't know what my values were anymore. Right. But I didn't spend time to even remember what they were or think about it. And now that I've realized what they truly are, the fact that I wasn't going towards my values is why I burned out. So know Mm -hmm. your values. And one of my biggest values is quality of care. So if I can't provide the good quality of care and I wasn't, I felt like I wasn't able to with all these constrictions on us, then that's what, you know, separates that path from where we truly want to go and where we're not able to go. And hence that can be a trigger for burnout too. So if you know your values and you know where you're headed, where you want to go, then mm-hmm. if you head that way, then it's not going to be a chore to go into work every day. And I'm right, hoping that right. people you know, are able to go back to that step and figure out your core values. Yeah. I, I wanted to let everyone know about these five things that really helped me figure out what my next step was. And they've been life changes I want to share with everyone because I really truly yeah. believe that people could benefit from this. And this is more what I've figured out from coaching, which I think is fantastic. Um, so the first thing is make sure you know your worth. You've got to know um, your own worth and your own values and your own, like what you come with before anyone else is going to see you or notice you. Because if you don't know your worth, no one's going to no one's going to look at you. And you also want to surround yourself with people who are, going to bring you up, bring you um, to, you know, basically you don't want naysayers in that circle around you because you already have negative thoughts. We all have negative thoughts in our brain. And if you've got people around you also reinforcing that, that's just going to spiral you down. You want to surround yourself with people who are empowering, who are positive and who will bring you up. And that will help you also know your worth. So that's number one, know your worth and surround. So community. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is find out your values, because honestly, I, as I said, I lost my values through med school residency. Um, I just was pushing and pushing and just keeping on going and just surviving and existing that I forgot yes. what my values were. And right. this is where, you know, what came back to me now that I, I actually stepped away is that quality really mattered to me. And if I don't have the ability to perform quality care to my patients, I, I, I realized that's what my trigger was to to go into burnout. And again, my burnout was way before my son was even born. It was in 2018 and I just didn't realize it. And so if you can figure out what your core values are, what really matters to you, then work doesn't become a chore anymore. Work is where you can fulfill them. And that's my goal here too, to let others know that too. Uh, So that's number two, again, both through coaching, which has been great. Um, The third one is, is self-care. And everyone says that about women, you know, especially in the pregnancy and postpartum period, find that time for self-care. Who has that time? (laughs) And even as women and physicians, who has a time to spend on self-care? And again, what is a self-care? But honestly, yeah, it's it's a a very loose definition. There's a lot of things that that really aren't self-care that are called self-care, but yeah. Yeah. Honestly, Mm -hmm. it could be taking three minutes to just jot jot down your thoughts, just have have a book next to you. It doesn't have to be a journal because journal makes it work again, but just somewhere you can just write down your thoughts or it could be where you just go and have a bath. Maybe it's yes. just a 15 minute That's bath. That's one of it my favorites. Something simple. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Um, one of my things uh, that actually has worked out for me recently is basically just taking a walk in the day, just going out for a walk, just decompressing and taking 15 minutes outside with nature. So that's been great, especially because so it's summertime important. right now. <laughs> mm-hmm, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So then the fourth thing is actually stillness. And that's a hard one for me because everyone talks about yoga and mindfulness mm. and meditation. I'm a newbie to this. I don't know any of this. Um, so what really has helped me is just, and, and first of all, we live in such a, a fast paced world. We've always got like this phone next to us with like Facebook and all these social media things that you can scroll through. You never really get time to spend with your own self to mm-hmm. then actually really understand what you want. So I know meditation and things again, sound like this is just, it's just unachievable, but I, if it's okay to bring up, I just wanted to, uh, I actually got the chance through my coaching to meet a, um, a fantastic woman physician who actually published her first book, which really is dumbing down stillness. And it's, mm-hmm. okay, if you don't mind, I'm going to show it to you, but oh, it's right, stillness please. practice, practicing stillness. And Great. it's literally fantastic. It's written by Dr. Nisa Kiyashin. So she uh, is a wonderful human being. And literally it's just this, that's it. That's your instruction. Mm-hmm. And it basically mm-hmm. goes through, like the first thing that I've done so far is just spending five minutes on breathing and just, just sit there and breathe and then let your thoughts go where they go and right. then redirect to the breathing. And that's your yeah. five minutes of self-care if you wanted it too. <laughs> yeah, totally. I try to share that with my patients that it doesn't have to be this, the mind is completely quiet. No, you can just focus on the breathing, bring it back to the breath and just take, and it doesn't exactly. have to take 30 minutes a day, right? Yeah. And then my last point, my fifth point is self-compassion. Mm-hmm. Give yourself grace. I, I was yes. always hard on myself. I think we all are, especially in a field in physici- as physicians where we're told to just keep going, keep going, keep pushing, keep giving more. You never, you know, we're hard on ourselves. And that was definitely something that helped us get through where we are now. But it's time to now say, okay, I'm human, you know, and it's okay mm-hmm. to be human. And that's where that, Self-compassion really matters. And what I've chosen to do is I've tried to take should out of my vocabulary, which has really helped me. (laughs) I choose to be where I am. I choose my next step. I choose to go back to medicine. Mm -hmm. And there's no, I should be back in medicine. I should do surgeries because I don't want to lose my medical license. Like I choose to. And that's that's really empowering to me because you always have a choice because we all feel trapped as women in, in physicians in medicine and in, especially in this corporate medicine world right now so if you decide and change that to i choose to stay here then you get it to where you want it to work for you yes oh what great advice i love it thank you so awesome. much for sharing that i think that's that's great and i love what you're doing and um will be shared did you tell us again the the way we can um, patients get or not patients but community members that that might yeah, moms that might be looking for what you're doing can find you but then also if other women physicians want to look at what you're doing too let us know yeah this is for all women pregnant postpartum with a child at home mm-hmm. trying to figure out their path and this is my goal is to find ourselves together and the way you can reach me is um, directly my email would be Priyanka V at mdsupportformoms.com. Great. And again, my website is www.mdsupportformoms.com. And I'm just so excited. I I know I can make an impact and I'm looking forward to meeting everyone. Oh, I know you can too. We're going to have your your information in the description and the show notes. And I really appreciate your time today. It's been a great conversation. Awesome. Thank you.